before we carry on, yes. I've noticed that all three of you are in the studio, yeah. and I'm in the studio with you. This is a momentous occasion. When was the last time? I don't know. Can I just say, though, you yeah. guys have been through the ringer, uh, and it's it's tough doing that. And, and I know in broadcasting, as someone who broadcasts with a co-host, when that rhythm that you're in gets disrupted, things can get tough. So I just want to, I know that probably nobody else would have said this on here, but I just want to offer my admiration for you three as a team, just toughing through the time that you've been through, coming to work, maintaining the smiles on air, and not dragging the rest of us down with your <laughs> absolute misery. I like that you say we've been through the ringer as if we're actually out the other no, end of it. No, I don't <laughs> think you're still going through it. There's lots of changes afoot. You guys, you guys are a good team. You are a pleasure to listen to, so thank you for coming to the party each oh, morning that you're on. Oh, we'll have you back next week, Frank. That's nice of you to Neither, say. Thank you. Thank you for for saying that to us. Um, hey, there could be worse things we could be doing, so we're all right. But we appreciate that commentary there, Frank. Appreciate you too. Yeah, because you've been sick, so we appreciate you, and we hope that you've gone come through the other side of whatever you have had. Oh, well. mate, uh, just in terms of my life, I'm <laughs> feeling better than I have in like four or five years. Don't rub it in, Frank. Look so, at you go. It's all about sleep. Yes. Nutrition. Yes. Yeah. Exercise, cold showers, well, those things. Oh, combined. do you not? Are you starting the ice bath thing? Are you, no, no, I, I, I oh, can never handle an ice no, bath. If you're doing but cold a hot shower, shower <laughs> with a blast at the end, it's just revolutionised oh, my it does, life. It, it, Next, you'll be standing outside bare feet to ground yourself in the morning, getting sunlight directly in oh, the do eyes. You not, do you not do that? You'll be listening to the Huberman <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him walking outside with the socks off. Is he you right, mate? <laughs> okay, let's do this. Okay. We want to talk about your reputation. My and reputation? No, or not just, yours. Not <laughs> yours. <laughs> just in general, yeah. Okay. Should we care about our reputation and the way that other people see us, or should we not care at all? Here, let, let me just paint this picture for you, okay? So on one hand, we look to discover and we look to discover and evaluate others on their character, not their reputation, right? But then on the other hand, some say that your reputation is the most valuable thing that you possess. Yeah, I'd say both of those are true. Because your reputation does generally or should flow out of your character. So that w so when we look at someone else and we're judging them based on their character or we're forming an opinion of them based on their character, that leads to them having a good reputation in our eyes. So both of those things get, get held together. And Scripture actually has a reasonable amount to say on this. And it talks about reputation being really valuable. In Proverbs, it talks about reputation being valuable. Ecclesiastes, it talks about it. You jump over to the New Testament and you get verses like this from uh, Romans 12, verse... I'll start at verse 17. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Then you jump over to Timothy, where uh, Paul is giving his instructions for the type of person that should be in church leadership or over oversight. And he says he must, he must not be a recent convert, or he may become puffed up with conceit and fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must be well thought of by outsiders so that he may not fall into disgrace, into a snare of the devil. So you should be well regarded by, by others. And that, that should flow out of your character, your integrity, your pursuit of being like Jesus. But reputation is not everything. It's extremely valuable, but obviously we can turn to other verses to say there, there may come times where people mock us and they revile us because of our pursuit to, to be like Jesus. Uh, but I don't think we should be pursuing that disgrace. But if it happens because of our integrity, then we've just got to accept that, it, that it's going to happen. We live in an age where people seem to have this desire to yell about everything that they disagree with or find offensive. And I think we've got that in the Christian community. You've got people who want to yell about everything in our culture that might morally offend us or we see as wrong or or different, I would say no, hold back. Uh, that pursuit of, of character and treating everybody well and living peaceably should be our pursuit. But if there are times where in the pursuit of integrity our reputation is going to be damaged, sometimes you've got to take it. Reputation's an interesting one because there's, I mean, if you've got a bad reputation amongst people, you probably might need to reflect a little bit on why that's the case. Yeah. Like, what are the actions, what are the things that I'm doing that have sort of caused people to see me this way and, and maybe it's 
kind of reflective or accurate. I don't know. Uh, but then is there a danger of it becoming to a point where people start to change their own behaviour or feel like they can't be true to themselves or their real self in certain situations because they're too worried about their reputation or being like, I have a reputation I need to uphold, therefore... Yeah. I, c- I can't fully be myself because I would worry that it maybe someone would think this. I don't know. Yeah, which is why I think it's worth seeing reputation as the product of a thing we more highly value rather than the thing in and of itself. So in Scripture, reputation is always an outflow of character. Mm. It's always an outflow of what, a, what it looks like to pursue Jesus. So the ability to live peaceably with others and to be perceived well by outsiders should be flowing out of our sense of integrity integrity, our ability to treat other people with honor, with love, dignity, and respect. It should be the ability to pursue our promises where we say we're going to do something, we actually do it. Uh, like that, That's how we should be perceived. But that is always an outflow of a character that is being transformed to look like Jesus rather than reputation itself being the thing that we're pursuing. It can be kind of hard when, when you know, we're all flawed people. Yeah. You know, we all make mistakes. Some people might want to hang their head on a mistake that somebody's made and therefore, you know, might be, you know, would they therefore may in their circle of people say things about you as a person based on one flaw? Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. And we, we live in a culture that likes to lynch over really, really small things. So, th- I mean, that has to be taken into account as well. You can't please everybody. So there's, there's that element too. I mean, uh, in everything that I do, as hard as I try to be a good broadcaster, to speak well in public, to always be true to who I am, to follow Jesus as much as I can, I know that there are people who hate my guts. Like, I get text messages every Sunday night on my radio show telling me how bad I am. Uh, <laughs> I know that that there are people out there who call themselves people of faith who pray against me. Uh, I can't fix that. All I can do is be as true as I can to my desire to follow Jesus and where I do stuff up to have the ability to say sorry and I got it wrong. We're in there. That's very nicely put. Coming up next, should we be bothered with repenting? Next with Reverend Frank Ritchie. Part two with Rev. Repentance. Now, because you weren't here last week, we saved this topic for you. So this is from last week. And when the three of us were talking, it was, it was something that came up in, at my church about repentance and why. Is it a command? Is it a gift? It's actually both. But I want you to speak on it as well. What is it? First That's of good all, question. let's start there. That's a good question because often in the way people frame it, what I think they're actually talking about is confession. Not repentance. Yes. I think I think when we talk about repentance and the way that it gets used in things like the sinner's prayer, for instance, that a lot of churches use when someone uh, comes up the front of church at an altar call for churches that do that, the word repentance will often be there, but we're often talking about confession, owning and acknowledging the things that we have done that go contrary to the life that God has called us into and life as God intended it. So we confess those things. Repentance is not the same thing. Repentance comes from the Greek word metanoia. So there's a verb and a noun related to that, the thing itself and the doing of that thing. What that's referring to is a change of mind. Uh, So new information gets introduced to you and you go through this complete change of mind and you turn in a different direction. So when Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near, what he's saying is change your mind, turn your life, go in a different direction because the kingdom of heaven is near. Life is close to you. The source of life and God and life as God intends it is here. Jesus is here. Now that that has been introduced to you, take a look at your life and turn in the direction of this. So when it says repent, it's saying turn in a different direction. Go through that transformation of your mind and go in this direction. Now, The use of that word in Greek can refer to many things. In Scripture, it is pretty much always used in relation to turning towards God and away from the life that you may have been leading, which the Bible would say if it's not attached to God, it's leading to destruction, it's leading to death, so turn in this direction. But to illustrate the point, in many Greek texts, the use of that word could be talking about many things, but it's it's always talking about a change of mind. How much of repentance is your own choice? 
um, to do something or to change and and try to change about yourself and how much of that is uh, God transforming you? Yeah. I, I love I love that question because I think there's a synchronicity to it. I, th- I think it's a journey of both working together. But it starts with Christianity is based on the idea that it's not simply an, a, something that we've come up with, that we've conjured up, which is how a materialist worldview would see it. I've come up with these ideas. We've come up with these ideas. We've conjured these ideas. So it's all about us. Christianity is based on the idea that there is a God who is intimately close to us, but he is also external of us. And God has revealed and is revealing himself. Uh, So when... When repentance happens in Scripture, it's because new information has been introduced, but it's assuming that that new information has been an introduction of God being revealed. Now, whether that happens through the words of other people or some other way, it's assuming that God has been revealed. And so, therefore, I will turn in that direction. That's why we understand faith as a gift that comes externally. It's a gift from God. So that ability to transform that ability to turn starts with God, but I participate in that. Mm. I'm part of that in the decisions that I make. I cannot take credit for it because it starts with a revelation from God outside of me, uh, but I participate in that journey. Practically, how does your repenting, should? how does that start? Like if I'm wanting to turn, as you say, and turn into a new direction, am I just really leaning into God and saying, forgive me, I'll really want to change my life and go this way? Is that, is that practically what I need to do? Yeah, yeah, I would say it starts there. It starts with the recognition of that new information that has been revealed, that there is another life on offer here. There is a life with God on offer here. And so I make the decision to turn in that direction and then starts a long process of sanctification where God is reforming us, but I make decisions every day that turn in that, that direction. And so thinking about the decisions that we make, the practices that we undertake, the spiritual discipline that we go through, the rhythms that we have in our life, all of that is part of repentance. Nice. It's always good to have you in studio talking with us, Frank. Appreciate you taking the energy, taking the time to be with us in studio every week. Take care and God bless, Frank. Thank you. More from Frank next week. And in fact, if there's something that you want Frank to unpack, by all means, you can send those through via text 8168. The keyword is life.